This video series will go over the training for our Zeiss LSM confocal microscopes at the ACRF Cancer Biology Imaging Facility at the Institute for Molecular Bioscience, the University of Queensland, Brisbane, Australia. This video series will cover all the topics required for the basic operation of these microscopes, with topics including a system overview, how to find your sample, how to capture an image, Z stacking, time series, tiling, positions, and bleaching. These systems are inverted and all have a full incubation cage with extra heated inserts and the option for additional atmospheric control with CO2. They have motorized objective nose pieces with multiple high quality air objectives and high NA oil or immersion objectives. Talk to facility staff about your specific needs if you have any questions. These microscopes all have motorized filter turrets for either directing fluorescent light to your samples, to the eyepieces for viewing and finding them, or directing light to the confocal scan head via the relevant ports. You should not use any buttons on the microscope stands to change filters. Instead, use the buttons within the software or the small touch screen. This is for safety reasons and is not optional. The eyepiece diopters can be adjusted to suit your own eyes. Otherwise, they should be left at zero by lining up the white dot with the marked zero position. Additionally, the eyepieces can be adjusted to suit your interpupillary distance. These microscopes use fluorescence lamps for finding your samples through the eyepieces via filter cubes, such as DAPI, GFP or M Cherry. These are all software controlled. They also have a bright field lamp for transmitted light imaging. For acquiring images using the confocal scan head, samples are illuminated with specific laser lines. And these vary slightly from system to system. However, all confocals support 405 nanometers for DAPI or blue samples, 488 for GFP or Alexa 488 samples and other green labels. 561 for M Cherry and other red labels, and 633 for far red imaging such as Alexa 647. These systems require very specific startup sequences to ensure all devices turn on and connect to the software in the right order to ensure smooth, consistent imaging sessions. Firstly, turn on the main switch followed by the system's PC switch a few seconds later. Then turn on the computer and log in. After logging into the computer, turn on the final switch components and wait for at least 30 seconds for the real-time controller to connect. You can check this by clicking on the network icon in the system taskbar near the clock. Note there will be two connections, one to the building network and one to the microscope. The microscope is the unknown network. If you don't see this unknown network, check the interlock key is horizontal on the main switch box. You may also see that it can take up to 30 seconds for the connection to stabilize between the computer and the real-time controller. You don't want to start the software until it stops disappearing and reappearing. If you are planning to image with the 458, 488 or 514 nanometer laser lines, for cyan, green, or yellow illumination, you'll need to turn on the argon ion laser. To do this, turn the key on the front of the black Lazos box from vertical to horizontal or to three o'clock. You'll hear the fans turn on and the switch on the front of the unit should always be left in the on position. The laser will stabilize over time and may take up to 30 minutes to reach peak output. To start the software, double click on the desktop icon for Zen Black. Once the program opens, then click the Start System button to initialize the microscope. You can also open the Boot Status option to see the different devices connecting and initializing. The startup sequence can take a couple of minutes. If you have a stream of errors appear in a new window in the bottom left, you may need to exit the software Turn off the third switch for the real-time controller, wait a few seconds, turn it back on, 
ensure the connection stabilized in the network icon and then restart the software. If you continue to see a lot of errors at startup, a full system restart may be required. This involves turning everything off, including the PC and starting again. If you still have issues after a full restart, contact facility staff for assistance. Most systems may throw up a single error at startup. These can include connection issues to incubation devices or definite focus systems being disabled. These errors are usually self-explanatory and you can make a judgment on whether you can continue to use the system with the error active or if it requires a system restart. Remember, if in doubt, contact facility staff. These Zeiss Confocals run the Zen Black software suite. The software is divided into a number of different main tabs. These include locate, acquisition, processing, and maintain. Some systems may have an extra tab for specific uses which are not covered in this series. The entire window can be resized by adjusting the zoom slider. There are also a number of pre-configured layouts stored for your convenience. If you close or lose one of the menus by accident, you can always reopen one of these configurations. The locate tab is used for finding your sample via the eyepieces using the fluorescent light source. The acquisition tab is used to configure your confocal imaging experiment. Processing tab is useful for a few processing steps. However, most of these can be preferably completed offline on one of the virtual analysis computers instead of taking up time on the acquisition device. Use of the maintain tab is only required for advanced users and is not covered in this series.